going on guys? Julian Smith here, bodybuilding.com athlete. We're going over 30 days to your best arms program. We are on week three, workout one. We're gonna be supersetting biceps, triceps, and forearms, maximizing the amount of time that we have in the gym and getting the most out of each one of these workouts. One thing that's cool about this workout is doing supersets is giving one muscle rest while the other one's doing the work. So it's gonna be maximizing the most amount of time that you have at the gym. This workout, if done individual exercise, would probably be closer to about an hour 15 to an hour and a half. But doing supersets back and forth, back and forth, probably gonna be out of the gym in less than 45 minutes. First superset we're working with is a decline bench skull crusher, then going right into double arm dumbbell bicep curls. The rep ranges throughout the 30 day program are gonna vary back and forth, but in the workout that we're hitting today, it's gonna be lower reps and we're going for more explosive and controlled movements. All right guys, we're getting started with our first superset with the workout. We are going from decline bench skull crushers right into double arm dumbbell curls. Uh, focus on the skull crushers with these. One thing that people need to focus on in general is minimum bend, uh, minimum bend in your upper arm. You wanna make sure that everything that's being moved is just here. A lot of swinging going back and forth, which I'm gonna show you in a second, is gonna be taking tension off of your triceps. Same thing goes for the dumbbells, but we'll get into that next. So getting going on the decline bench skull crushers. Big mistake that people make is on these in general, one, too much weight, two, too much movement in the upper arm. So if they're doing a skull crusher, they're going like this, they're pulling it down and doing something like this to try to get it up. What that's doing is engaging some of your lats just a little bit more, so try lightening it up. But you just need to remember that elbows stationary the entire time is what's gonna give you the most tension on your triceps. If you're at a flat bench skull crusher, you're gonna be contracting right above your neck right above your chest. That's a full contraction. But what's cool about the decline bench skull crushers is if you slightly point your elbows back above your face, as you come up and completely contract, because of the angle backwards, full tension is still in your triceps. You do not wanna be contracting up like this because that's like standing straight up with a squat and the tension is gonna be off of your muscles. So instead of coming all the way up like this to there, bring your elbows back to here, then contract up and then kind of out in front of your face. That's gonna give you the biggest bang for your buck with tricep engagement on these. Superset, meaning we're going right into the opposing muscle. So triceps going right into a uh, bicep session. So the reason why preacher pad and all these things were invented was so the pulling back with your elbows during exercises, barbell curl, dumbbell curl, anything where you're gonna be doing a curl and your elbow starts to travel back behind your shoulder, that's when it's gonna be taking tension off of your bicep and it's not gonna give you the biggest stimulation to that muscle. So what you need to realize is, pretend like there's a pad behind you, so when you contract up, all the tension is gonna be on your bicep. General rule of thumb, if you're looking at yourself in the mirror or looking lined up, just make sure that your elbow is right underneath your delt or a little bit out in front of it. So if you can't travel back and everything's out in front and all the tension's on your biceps, there's gonna be no rear delt or delt or upper trap engagement. It's gonna be pure uh, bicep muscle. So curling out in front, no momentum, just as we talked about in the skull crusher. If you start to feel anything like this or swinging movement like this, try to keep that torso nice and straight, nice good posture, and then curl straight up, down, straight up, down. Good form over everything. All right, guys, the reason why we're starting with the decline bench skull crusher and a double arm dumbbell curl is because at the beginning of your workout, fresh, you're gonna be able to move the maximum amount of weight possible on these exercises. On the tricep portion of this, we're gonna be doing the decline bench skull crusher and where we wanna be feeling this, because we're going an inside shoulder width grip, is kind of all out activation of the tricep. I like to switch up the variations of my grip throughout all of my tricep workouts. So let's say next time you guys try this, instead of doing an inside shoulder width grip, you're gonna go outside your shoulder width grip. What that's gonna do is gonna be activating the inside head of your tricep just that much more. And then when you go inside closer, it's gonna be full tricep activation with really no emphasis on different heads. For the double arm dumbbell curl portion of this superset, we're gonna be curling right out in front of us. We're just doing standard today. That's just like the triceps. You can switch up that grip, switch to where you're contracting from. And two, changing up where you contract to is gonna put a slight emphasis on different parts of the bicep. So on the bicep portion of this workout, arms in general, I think it's one of those things where people use way too much weight. You don't need to be doing the maximum amount of weight that somebody else is doing if you can get great results from half the weight that that guy's doing. You wanna make sure your form's perfect and then you're gonna see more results that way. 
All right, guys, that's it for the first superset. We're gonna go on to our next one now. Rope press down into rope hammer curl. Really cool thing about the ropes in general is the fact that it's not a fixed position. A rope allows you to be close together here, and then as you come down, you can spread it apart or bring it up, keep it down narrow the entire time. Same concept uh, for the hammer curls as well. Rope is something that needs to be fit in. It's a really beneficial exercise, beneficial attachment for your arm training. So getting started on this right now, one thing that we need to worry about on this, form over everything, and then make sure there's limited movement in the upper arm. I feel like it's a broken record today, but that's all we're talking about, because that's what you need to do to get the most engagement out of your triceps. A lot of people do this. Swinging movements, they're pulling this down, they're getting their back engaged, their rear delts engaged, everything possible because they're going too heavy. I only have 30 pounds on this. This is all you need when you do it correctly. Good form, nice posture, shoulder blades retracted back, and then contract down out in front of you. Upper arm has very little movement taking place. A dead stop at the top and a pause at the bottom. Grab the rope, move over to the next. As mentioned before we started, this entire superset is limiting the movement in the upper arm is gonna be uh, vital for this entire thing. So you start swinging, you start moving the upper arm too much, it's gonna take the tension off of the muscle that you wanna work. Opens a little bit out in front of you. Imagine the preacher pad situation again. Then you can curl up. Again, what's cool about the rope, you can bring them together. One rep, bring it out for there for two. Outside for three. If you don't wanna switch it up that much, just stick to the basics. There's no swinging. Just make sure you get good, controlled reps. Not pulling anything back. Elbows are right out in front of your shoulders. Good controlled form no matter what with those low reps is probably something not very many people have done before. So getting that squeeze with four rep level weight on your triceps is gonna be a game changer for you. So since we're still going into the lower reps on these, it's gonna be really hard to contract down with the rope and then spread apart. Just make sure you get that good form down. It doesn't need to be the maximum amount of spreading apart. Just have it come down nice and controlled and get as much of an emphasis kick out as you can, and that's all you need. One thing that's cool about the cable portion of this superset is you can step back, you can get underneath, doesn't matter where you are, you can structure yourself to where you're standing and where you're leaning over to get better tension on the muscles. But if the cable's down and you take three steps back, it's gonna be pulling in a different direction that a dumbbell normally wouldn't do. So it's beneficial to throw this stuff in there and throw it in on top of your other movements that are the mass movements like the skull crushers and the barbell curls or dumbbell curls. It's gonna be the best of both worlds. All right guys, finished up our second superset, moving on to our third. Barbell spider curls and tricep dip machine. Let's get after it. All right, guys, on to our third superset. We got barbell spider curls uh, facing reverse on an incline bench and going right over the dip machine. You don't need to use an easy bar. You don't need to use a flat bar. You can use dumbbells. Doesn't matter what you're working with here. So we're gonna get into it like this. I like to take my lower body completely out of the movement and put all of my focus onto my biceps. So I'll sit forward a little bit more like this, knees up, uh, so it's only my arms that are gonna be working on this. Uh, second to this, this is one of those hard ones. This is a, a difficult exercise to master because it is 100% your biceps that are taking place. But these are the ones that people usually seem to uh, fail proper form on more than anything. So if we get right into this, most people, when they do this incorrectly, are gonna be doing something like we talked about earlier with the pulling the elbows back. If you start doing this exercise and see how my elbows immediately start to bend backwards, that's a mistake. You don't wanna be doing any swinging either to get it started. You wanna keep those elbows pointed straight down. I always tell people to do this. Bring the bar back and then just let it go. And then when that is hanging straight down to the ground, your elbows should not move from that anymore. That is the perfect form for where you're at on that angle. And then you contract up. You don't want to be moving your elbows back or forward. At that dead hang like this, that's where your arms should stay pointed down the entire time. And then contract up. Same thing on the way down. You want those elbows to stay in that same position. It's going to put most tension on your biceps instead of doing something where you're trying to 
get the weight up without your uh, biceps taking over. All right, guys, going from the spider curl right into the tricep dip machine. If you don't have this specific variation of a dip machine, totally fine. They're all generally the same thing. We just got to hammer down the upper, lower arm, and then the elbow placement with this, and then you'll be good to go with whatever you got. So we'll get all set up here with the seat. Big issue people seem to run into on this is if you are getting into this and you are hunching yourself over like this for your triceps, you're gauging your chest. So what we want to do from this position, if this is how you normally do it, scoot yourself upright so then you can't bend forward like this engaging your chest. What is bending is only your upper and lower arm creating a pivot point and then contracting straight down. So just like anything else, this is gonna be one of those bar movements. You wanna make sure there's zero swinging taking place. Anytime that that elbow travels backwards or is moving too far forwards on the way up, you're gonna be contracting the wrong way and you're probably gonna be taking some of the tension off that bicep. Although we're not getting into the four reps, we're ending this set with six reps on these supersets. The reason why we're doing this later in the workout and going from 12 down to six is the fact that when you're fresh and you're in the beginning of your workout, you have more strength, you can control the weight that much more. You don't necessarily always wanna be putting anything lower than six reps at the end of your workout, just in case you have an injury and you're not fresh uh, doing the weight that you think you can do. All right, guys, done with this uh, superset right here with triceps and biceps. An arm workout is not complete without hitting forearms. I know people seem to neglect that a little bit more than anything, but it's one of those workouts that you might not want massive forearms, and that's totally fine, but what everybody should have in regards to lifting is the strength that comes with forearms, because that's just gonna help you out with most lifts in general. So we're gonna go over here, we can get started on the wrist curls, and then the reverse wrist curls uh, following that. An arm workout is not complete, unless the forearms are gonna be tacked on at the end or at the beginning. They need to be hit within your arm workout or just in general. I like to pair mine up with my biceps and triceps, more preferably with my uh, biceps because I'm already gonna be engaging a lot of my forearms on these days in general. It's kind of one of those accessory work you throw in at the end of your workout, but nine times out of 10, people are usually probably too exhausted with their workout to stay after and do forearms. So I would recommend maybe doing this either at the beginning or if you're comfortable with your workout, we're tacking these on at the end. So from here, we're gonna grab right at the other side of this bench. You can do a regular bench, a box, whatever works for you, whatever you have at your gym. So if you just get on a standard bench and sit and straddle it like this with your arms hanging off the side, you can't go too far out. And that's kind of a general rule of thumb in general for your uh, forearms. So if you go right here, straddling the bench and perform your wrist curls, that's gonna isolate that by itself. Same thing when you turn it over like this, put all that tension right on your uh, forearms and all the muscles that we're trying to work right now. So starting off with this set, we're gonna grab this. And we're doing only standard wrist curls. Hanging off, up, down, up. Some people like to do this where they let them roll off on their fingers, but that's more of a grip strengthening exercise. Going to here, I would do that by itself, but that's not what we're working here. We're gonna come down with just the wrist, contract up. We're hitting this muscle right here the entire time. This down here is gonna be fingers and grip. This is gonna be your forearms. Down, contract. When we're done with this part of the superset, we're gonna drop it, a couple deep breaths, grab it again on the reverse, inside, same thing. Down, contract. This is pure isolation right now. There's no other movement taking place. The only thing you can do is contract straight up and let the weight straight down. What you wanna do on the regular wrist curls is you can have it wrapped over. I like to keep mine underneath the entire time. It just feels more structured that way. When you have it around like this, the way that your wrist is moving, I feel a lot of tension on my wrist in a negative way. If you have that thumb wrapped around the outside like this and you can drag up, it's only your wrist and hand moving and there's not putting your thumb in a weird position that could be tweaking your wrist. So benefits of the forearm strength and benefits of training your forearms in general is it's just gonna be helpful for everything else. Doesn't matter if you're moving boxes or helping somebody out with yard work or, or getting after it in the gym, stronger forearms is gonna help you out with most things that you come into contact with in regards to bodybuilding or weight training. Don't just lift, grow. If you are ready to get serious about building serious arms, it's time to get started.